Greetings everyone, I'm Justice R. Stone and this is my continued playthrough of the visual novel Everlasting Summer. So we had a little bit of a heart to heart with Elisa last episode and that ended up with us landing in her cabin all alone with a whole bunch of vodka. And now we're going to see what happens in this episode of Everlasting Summer. I breathed out abruptly and swallowed the contents of the glass in one quick motion. A short moment after, I regretted that. Oh, I didn't eat dinner, right? Got any food to chase this? Wait a second, Elisa said excitedly and pulled a huge stick of ham out of her drawer. I tore it from her hands and bit off a big piece. Whew. So, how was it? You're asking? It's not like I have full strength booze every day, you know. I didn't really understand how I'd agreed to this so easily. Well, how was it? Like... Like double bubble with vodka flavor. Alright, time for another round then. She opened the bottle again and poured us half a glass each. Don't you think that's enough? No way. Well, since we've already started... The alcohol was starting its work. Without a second thought, I gulped down the vodka. Elisa was definitely less experienced. She was having some trouble with her second glass. Ugh. How does it... She seemed really drunk already. If you can't take the heat, stay out of the kitchen. I said merrily, pouring myself some more. Somewhere deep inside, I realized it was too much. But the gun was already loaded. How about me? Elisa was outraged. Haven't you had enough? No way. She grabbed the bottle from my hand and started to drink straight from it. Hey! And we have glasses, you know. Scrum! She shouted and roared in laughter. This is so cool. And I, I can't do I can't do slightly feminine and drunk. I can't do it. <clears throat> she said, catching her breath. Well, sure, it's not bad. I looked at the bottle. We'd gone through two-thirds. I wonder how big that initial bottle was. I was definitely drunk by that point, and Elisa seemed even worse. Then again, there was barely anything left. I sighed and poured a full glass for myself, and a half for Elisa. That's all. With these words, she chucked the bottle from the window. What if they find it? Oh, who cares? We both laughed. Okay then, for all ladies present, I grunted and drank. And for the gentleman, she followed my lead. I'm getting dizzy. She undid a few buttons on her shirt. Oh, here we go. Get your sensors ready, boys and girls. <laughs> I carefully looked at her. Had she always been this beautiful? Or is everyone beautiful to me at this point? <laughs> Whichever it was, I could not force myself to look away. You're going to stare a hole through me if you keep going like that, Elisa laughed. Sorry. Embarrassed, I stared at my feet. You can look if you're so interested. With some effort, I opened an eye and saw her continuing to unbutton her shirt. No words could escape my mouth. Besides, who needs words at a moment like this? Whoa, okay, yeah, censored. <laughs> The light bulb burned out, or one of us turned off the light, but either way, the room went dark. I looked around her cabin and thought of something. Where's Oleana? What, you're afraid someone will come in and see us? She grinned warmly. It could happen. I asked her to spend the night at another girl's cabin. Wait, so you planned all this? Well, not something like this, of course. She looked at me intently, smiled, and closed her eyes. Yeah. I stared at the ceiling for a while longer, and soon heard quiet, deep breathing. Elisa was asleep. My head ached suddenly. The alcohol seemed to be wearing off. Best thing to do in this case is to follow her lead and get some sleep as well. 
Before I finished the thought, I was already fast asleep. Day seven? They lied. I thought there was going to only be a day six. Well, let's see what happens. Day seven. Some people were chasing me. Or maybe they weren't people, but fuzzy black blots with a hellish landscape in the background. I ran, ran, stumbling over something, having no air to breathe. My whole essence was overtaken by primal fear and terror. And then, a memory lapse. I opened my swollen eyelids, only for my eyes to be struck by bright daylight. A terrible taste in my mouth, pains all over my body, and a severe headache. It seemed someone was drinking hard yesterday. After coming to my senses, I started to recall the events of last night. I believe there was a bottle of vodka, which I happily emptied together with Elisa. I tried to stand up, but something was pinning my left arm. It was the peacefully snoring Elisa, naked. Everything that happened returned to my mind. Fear was quickly replaced by a feeling of euphoria. I relaxed lazily on the bed, enjoying a beautiful hungover morning. Sometime later, Elisa woke up. I kissed her softly and said, Good morning. She gave me a blank look for a couple of seconds and then jumped up shouting, You! You! M me what? Realizing that she was kind of naked, Elisa snatched the blanket from me and wrapped herself up. Yesterday you, she hissed, but it, it was kind of your idea. I was drunk. So was I. What can you do? Elisa was furiously looking at me, but then calmed down and sat beside me. All right, whatever happened, happened. Are you sure? I got up and tried to hug her. Don't, she whispered, blushing. Why? Because. Elisa frantically shook her head. Because it's four o'clock already. And what? Don't tell me you're late for something. Everyone will leave without us. Leave where? Today is the last day. The last day of what? I asked, completely confused. The last day of the term. What? The hangover that seemed to have already passed a while ago made a sharp comeback. Don't tell me you didn't know, I asked Elisa in surprise. So, you did know it? Well, yes, but I'd forgotten it somehow. And what should we do now? Actually, that wasn't the main thing that I was concerned about. If today is the last day, then everyone will go somewhere. So I can get out of this camp somehow. Well, I have no idea. Maybe we can still make it. I jumped out of the bed and started dressing quickly. It was difficult as my coordination was badly disturbed by yesterday's lavish indulgence. What are you waiting for? Elisa didn't reply, but started dressing too. A couple of minutes later, we were standing at the deserted square. Let's go to the camp leader's cabin. After opening Olga Dmitrievna's cabin with my key, I found nobody inside. We checked the entire camp and found that we were alone here. After returning to the square, I sat down and covered my face with hands like a doomed man. I still felt sick, but now it turned out that I had to solve a serious problem. Where would they have gone? Well. To the district center, I guess. Do you know where it is? Uh, approximately. Is it possible to reach it on foot? I don't know. And how long would it take on a bus? A couple of hours. Quickly, I reckoned how much that is in kilometers. Taking into consideration the quality of the Soviet motor car industry and Soviet roads, one could presume that it is quite possible to reach it on foot provided that Elisa knows the exact direction. Moreover, in my situation, it's not easy to decide on such steps. But we can't stay here either. Alone, without food in a deserted pioneer camp? 
In real life, it would be a definitely bad idea, and I had no other choice but to treat everything happening as reality. Let's go. Where? To the district center. Are you mad? You'd prefer to stay here? Sure. They'll notice that we're missing and will return. Don't you think it's odd that they didn't notice it during departure? Well, yeah, but... She started to think. But to go somewhere all on her own. But you said you knew the direction. I do. She agreed without confidence. So what's there to think about? Maybe we'll encounter some local buses on the way. I don't really believe that myself, but if there is an exit from this camp, this idea seems quite solid. I don't know. As you say, she prattled on confusedly. Then start packing your stuff. Meet here in half an hour. I ran towards Olga Dmitrievna's cabin. Yes, not much to pack. I tossed my warm clothes into a bag, and I was about to go when an interesting thought crossed my mind. What would I actually need them for? It doesn't seem to be late summer, so what's the point in dragging unnecessary weight along? Especially since I don't know how far I have to walk. After reasoning that one could survive such weather without a coat and warm boots, I shoved my cell phone with its dying battery into my pocket and went to the square. I had to wait at least 20 minutes for Elisa. My hangover seemed to ease a little, so I could better focus on the previous night. What does she really mean to me? Was it just drunken sex or something more? Naturally, I can't speak for Elisa. It's difficult even to speak for myself. I began to remember the course of my acquaintance with her, how she teased and mocked me at first, her arrogance and self-confidence. It was more than compensated for by the tenderness of last night. It was already clear that she is not the person she wants to seem like. But what kind of person is the real Elisa? And do I have any feelings toward her? I do feel sympathy, a sort of affection, but is there something more? My reflections were interrupted by Elisa. Here, take it. She held out a huge backpack to me. What's this? I asked skeptically. My stuff. Why so little? I brought as much as I could fit. Look, we don't know how far we have to go. Maybe you can take only them the most necessary things. So what? I just have to throw it away? Leave it here? Elisa sniffed. Firstly, I couldn't understand why she even has that much stuff. And secondly, what's so valuable in there? But the chivalrous duty of carrying it is mine, isn't it? Of course. She smiled archly. I evaluated how much it would weigh. About ten kilos, I guess. I can carry that for a few kilometers, but not much further than that. You do understand that we'll not get very far with it. Well, we'll do our best. You mean I can throw something out later? We'll see. She answered with her eyes flashing slyly. Okay, I'm taking you at your word. After all, as I have to carry it, I have the right to throw things out of it. And so, our journey began. It took me at least an hour to start getting tired. I would never have thought that I possessed such stamina. Either the backpack was easy to carry, or last night's exercises had trained my muscles. I stopped on the roadside and threw Elisa's belongings to the ground. What are you doing? She was clearly resentful. Do you want to carry it yourself? Of course not. In that case, I need to rest. Naturally, the most rational decision was to get rid of most of the stuff, keeping only the most necessary things, but I couldn't bring myself to such drastic measures. You've been keeping silent for the whole time. Elisa was staring vacantly down the road that receded into the distance. What is there to talk about? Don't know. But you're behaving as if nothing happened. Did something happen? She asked absent-mindedly. Well, you know. Had enough rest? Then let's go.
Elisa began to quickly walk away from me. Hey, wait a minute. I shouldered the backpack and ran after her. We've been traveling in silence for some time, with Elisa slightly ahead and me behind. I had no idea how to start a conversation. She seems to be giving out obvious hints that the night's events were one big mistake. At least, it seems so to me. Though from my point of view, what happened was meant to happen. For the last few days in the camp, I'd definitely been attracted to Elisa. And I believe she was attracted to me as well. In that case, what's the problem? Maybe she doesn't want it to be just a one-night stand. You know... She turned and looked at me. If I did something wrong, you did nothing wrong. But it just turned out this way. So it was just an accident? I didn't say that. Then what did you say? My inability to get a straight answer made me begin to lose my temper and I raised my voice. You're just giving me hints, ambiguities. What about straightforwardness, sincerity? You weren't like this before. People tend to change. She slowly paced forward. Change? You call this a change? You are a completely different person now. Just like Lena, really. Elisa stopped, but didn't turn. Don't compare. Got it? Don't compare me with her. She spoke quietly, but there was rage in her voice. What? I was somewhat taken aback. You blame me for everything, but what about yourself? You're constantly looking at her. Even now, you manage to see her in me. Wait, what's... Why did you come yesterday, then? You could have gone to her. You did know. Did know what? Did know that I was waiting for you. It seems that making this confession was a hard decision for Elisa, but at first I assigned little significance to her words. Well, you yourself told me to come yesterday, so I... This isn't about that. Elisa burst into sobs and covered her face with hands. I was completely taken aback. I still didn't get what she's hinting at, so it was impossible to talk normally. Sorry. Forgive me. Stop apologizing. But if I said or did something wrong, so what's the point in apologizing if you already did? Better to behave yourself from the beginning. But I don't know how. Elisa looked up at me. There was so much sorrow in her gaze that I couldn't bear it and turned away. We stood like that for some time. Soon, she seemed to pull herself back together. Okay, forget it. Let's move on. Naturally, I couldn't forget it, even if I wanted to. But I had nothing to say anyway, so I followed her in silence. And that's where I'm going to end the video for today. So we've had our little intimacy with Elisa and it made us miss the bus. So now we're hoofing it apparently to see if we can catch up with everyone. We'll see what happens. Am I going to find my way out of this crazy world? Uh, am I going to just live in it for the rest of my life? I guess we'll maybe find out in the next episode of Everlasting Summer. Subscribe to the channel so you can check that video out. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. I hope to see you next time. Until then, bye-bye for now.